Hi there, welcome to another episode of Harrison Hobbies. Today we are going to be looking at the Baja 700 or 900 uh, propane generator. In today's test we'll add some oil to it. Uh, got some old 10 weight 40 here. I didn't really trust the oil that came with it. Uh, especially because I think that there may be a good portion of the oil already on the unit here. Uh, so we'll get some oil in it, we'll get it started, and then we will hook it up to an oscilloscope and we'll see what kind of waveform it has. Uh, <coughs> in reading online I noticed that uh, a lot of reviews were saying this has a modified sine wave, which is basically a square wave. Right. And so we'll be able to put it under load here and we'll see how square that wave actually gets and we'll make an assessment on whether or not that's probably going to damage inductive loads such as fans or compressors on a refrigerator, stuff like that. Uh, it does seem to be a fairly quality generator based on the reviews I've read, so I'm not sure if there will be any issue, but, uh, but yeah, we'll get it going. We'll do a quick look around it, and then we will we'll see how it does. Okay, so the first thing that we've got to do here is remove the front panel fasteners are not captured so they'll fall out so make sure you don't lose those it comes with the included screwdriver here we'll try to manipulate this off there we go okay and so there it is there's our big uh, our propane regulator take a quick look inside Uh, this is a very, very small engine. So, okay, so there's really nothing that we needed here. Looks like we have a grommet already starting to fall out. There we go. Generac IX1600 right here. Generac is much heavier, um, but about the same size. So, granted, you're almost double the output of the Generac versus this, but for an all propane solution, this may be a pretty good guy. Let's pull this off. And it looks like a bunch of oil leaked all over while it was in shipping, so uh, they probably did a test run in the factory, and uh, there's probably a little left in the case. There we go. Okay. So here we are. We've probably got an air filter here. Got a... looks like auto choke. These uh, work in there real quick. We are bone dry. There's a tiny bit of oil down in the hole there. Let's see if we can zoom in here. So, not much, just a little. Uh, fortunately for us, they furnished a handy dandy single use funnel. So we can get this in. We basically want this to go to the bottom of the threads. And we have the helper Will. <laughs> Careful, buddy. And I think we're getting close. No, 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 we don't need to put chalk in there. There we go, we're well right where we need to be. We can go ahead and put this on. Just take a quick look and see what the air filter looks like. Okay. Just a regular old foam filter. Nothing special, but there we're good okay 
Those are really the only two user serviceable things on this side here. It looks like this time though, whenever we pulled this panel off here, the ground stayed. Let's get a quick zoom in on this placard here. Okay, so now we've got this thing all oiled up. Uh, the next step is going to be sticking in our propane here. So, looks like uh, to be expected though, but I read reviews that inside here uh, where you put in the propane that is pretty soft and so it's prone to cross threading. Let's see what we got here. Okay. We got it. As long as you don't grill strength it in, it should be fine. Okay. Also kind of awkward to hold there, but I think we got it. Now according to this manual here, so some other features that it comes with is it did come with the spark plug tool, it came with the screwdriver that we used to remove the side panels, it also comes with the 20 pound propane tank adapter. Uh, it's really short here, so again that was another negative on this that I read, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so now the first thing that we do in the startup here is going to be hitting the prime button. Certainly heard that. Yeah, yeah. We'll go on to on, and let's give it a pull. Wow, that is easy. Let's give it a little, so there is no choke here. Holy cow. This thing is quiet. Okay. So, obviously it's loud enough that he's covering his ears, but I'm talking at a regular volume right now, and I don't think the camera's going to adjust its volume. You could, this is, this is remarkably quiet, I guess, even compared to the Generac I had on here a minute ago. Okay. So, right off the bat here, we can see this is not a, uh, a modified sine wave. This is a legitimate sine wave here that we can see. So now, now that it's had a couple of minutes to warm up, we're going to uh, give it the next run here. And we'll run the heater. So sine wave is still looking really good. Okay, so now here we're running probably 100 watts. And then there, the sign starts to get a little bit choppy. Okay, and it cut out. And right now we can see it says overload. So we're gonna have to grab the multimeter here. Okay, so it's back. Okay, so we did some testing here real quick. Uh, I went out and grabbed my multimeter here with a line splitter so we can get some actual current draw estimates since we did trip. And I'm pretty sure the first setting on that is 500. It may be 900, in which case this thing did perform as expected. But let's, let's give it a shot real quick. So let's refuel the engine. Uh, okay, we're good here. Okay. Pulling 0.23 amps, uh, and at 0.23 times, so this I don't think I have calibrated right, because this is saying that I have uh, 300 and something volts. So we'll just grab these leads. We're at 120.7 volts. So we're right where we want to be here. So this is about perfect. Now let's see what happens whenever we crank the... So we're dropping down. And then it killed itself. But the waveform still maintained a pretty good shape. So 
we'll allow that thing to recover for a second here. Okay, so just a second ago here, I mean, the thing was uh, overloaded for about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds. Uh, the second that the overload tripped off, uh, the engine bogged down, and you can tell this thing doesn't use flywheels or anything, it's just using giant capacitors to hold the charge, which is probably why whenever we were checking out the wattage here, we saw the voltage drop, 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 was it was depleting the capacitors. There we go. We're at uh, 24. And then we go 0.24 times 120, because we're right there, is uh, 28 watts. So basically nothing. And then let's put it on high. So it looked like we hit about 8.2. We were struggling there. We can plug that in and get mains on it. Uh, 8.2 times 120 gives us 984. So, uh, so at 984, we are exceeding even its startup rating. So the fact that it was able to deliver that for a second shows that it's relatively robust. Well, this concludes the testing of the Baja 900 or 700 watt generator here. Uh, quick conclusion on it, we were able to run uh, an inductive load up to around 950 watts uh, before it cut out. It didn't seem to have any problem. Uh, it says right here, 900 peak. So uh, it was able to start that, it was able to sustain that for a few seconds. Um, feeling around here, again, it's only been shut off for a couple of seconds, I just repositioned the camera. Uh, and it's basically cool to the touch. You know, there's a little bit of warmth here, but uh, overall, for a $300 generator, this thing is is awesome. You know, I've seen them go on sale quite a bit for even down around, you know, 200 220 So if you're trying to power a fridge, maybe charge your cell phone during a power outage, uh, this thing will certainly fit the bill. So in the coming weeks, uh, we'll create a quick video where we we'll walk around and grab some accessories at the house. Uh, and we use the line splitter here and the, the current meter and try to figure out what wattage different things are taking uh, and so we can get a better idea of what this will have based on you know fridges they usually require around four or five hundred watts starting and around 200 watts sustain so i mean this is right up this thing's alley um, it's quiet enough that you're not going to bug your neighbors here again i had it inside the garage uh, it smells like a home depot after a, uh, a propane forklift has gone around here you can definitely smell the propane uh, but it's also really clean burning uh, so it wasn't super noxious at all in here uh, overall, I I got this because you know it's interesting. Right? It's a super compact package. It weighs 25 pounds. It's super lightweight. Uh, I figure you know even my wife uh, can do that. Her back is kind of shot. You know, it's lightweight. It's easy to start. I mean the pull cord has virtually you know no resistance with it. Uh, overall, I think this is a, a pretty fantastic generator. So it definitely, I guess after a bench test here, it gets my recommendation. I live in the Northwest, we don't get a lot of storms or anything here, um, but certainly once we do get the first, I will do uh, an evaluation on it. We'll keep it running some equipment, but overall, it's a pretty good deal. So thanks for watching and check back soon for more videos.